Hello everyone, I'm Marcella Barron from City and Financial. I'm delighted to be joined today by Nasca Delfas, the Chief Financial Ombudsman and Chief Executive of the Financial Ombudsman Service. Um, Nasca is one of the speakers at City and Financial's Consumer Protection in Financial Services Summit, um, taking place on the 29th of September. Can I start by asking you, um, given the current cost of living crisis, has the Financial Ombudsman Service seen an increase in referrals from consumers who feel they have been treated badly? Let me just start by explaining that the Financial Ombudsman Service is a, a free and simple to use service that customers and small businesses um, uh, can come to to resolve disputes with financial services uh, firms. And we look at each case uh, fairly and impartially and decide whether the business needs to put uh, something right. In terms of uh, at times of economic hardship, we often see an uptick in complaints. How big that uptick is will depend on how well firms deal with the complaints uh, themselves. But looking back at the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw almost a 60% increase uh, in complaints to the Financial Ombudsman Service. So this is something that we're looking at very carefully. The increase in the cost of living is affecting everyone. And so we're actively engaging with other members of the regulatory family and sharing information to prepare for and anticipate areas in which uh, we may see problems uh, occur and ideally to prevent unfairness arising in the first place. We're particularly concerned about unaffordable lending and people becoming more vulnerable uh, to fraud and scams. In terms of fraud and scams, uh, during the pandemic, we saw the number of complaints from victims of scams nearly double. And we're already seeing an uptick in complaints about authorised push payment fraud relating to investment scams. And this is bucking the trend because other types of um, authorised push payment fraud complaints we're seeing uh, declining. So this is an area that we're concerned about. In terms of lending and unaffordable lending, we haven't yet seen an increase uh, in complaints in that area, but we are keeping a close eye on that. Consume, um, cre credit cards remains the second most uh, complained about area. So that is something that we're, we're continuing uh, to look at very carefully. Talking of credit, there has been a dramatic rise in buy and I pay later lenders with uh, more and more players entering the market. How is the uh, FOS responding to this new category of lenders and what has been the impact on consumers? Well, most buy now pay later products are not yet regulated. And so where something goes wrong, um, customers are not able to bring their complaint uh, to us. Uh, we understand that it's likely that regulation in buy now pay later will, will not be implemented until 2024 uh, at the earliest. And we're only going to be able to look at complaints about problems that occurred or once a pro product has been regulated and we can't apply uh, the rules and standards uh, retrospectively. We are staying in close contact with the FCA and the Treasury uh, as they consider what regulation is required in this area and we regularly share uh, insights um, and experience from what, from what we see. Uh, clearly from the lender's perspective they need to start getting prepared for regulation and um, the sorts of issues that might come up are around suitability, affordability, fees and charges. And from a customer's perspective, consumers need to make sure that they're not overextending themselves and to make sure that they know what they're able to, to afford to pay back. Um, where customers are struggling with, with debts, uh, one, one of the things we've been doing with the regulatory family is to um, uh, communicate uh, as clearly as possible with consumers so that they can go and seek help where uh, needed. And uh, we've got uh, directions on our website to um, Money Helper uh, website, which is uh, serviced by the Money Advice and Pension Service. Thank you. And uh, finally, um, the FCA following the consultation decided against introducing a private right of action for consumers to sue firms direct for breach of the consumer duty. Can the FOS provide sufficient redress for consumers who have suffered harm as a result of breach of the duty? 
Well, uh, as I mentioned, the Financial Ombudsman Service offers a simple and accessible way for most consumers and small businesses to have their complaints resolved and to, to pursue redress. Um, and we look at what is fair and reasonable um, in each case and whether redress is appropriate. So far, we can award up to a statutory maximum of uh, £375,000 um, uh, as redress uh, in cases, and in some cases can also award compensation for non-financial loss as well. Um, we have a wide remit uh, at the Ombudsman Service, and we're able to resolve disputes relating to breaches of regulatory principles. So um, for that reason, it's uh, very simple and easy for customers and small businesses to access our services and to get um, their disputes resolved. Of course, with a, a private right of duty, that would involve a private right of action. Sorry, well, that would involve uh, customers incurring the costs of going to court and so forth. So, overall, we, we welcome the uh, the introduction of the new consumer duty, and we're working with the FCA and with our stakeholders to to help to make the implementation as successful as possible. For example, we're going to be publishing some case studies later in the year with the FCA. Or to give uh, to give more illustration as to what the consumer duty means, and we're going to continue to engage with our stakeholders on it. Thank you very much indeed, Zanisika, and we look forward to discussing this in greater detail um, on the 29th of September. Thank you. Thank you.